Hello again. Today we are going to be learning about electric field and particularly what it is because this is a concept that we haven't really interacted with too much in physics so far. So the first thing that we want to start thinking about is how does a charge apply a force to another charge at such a distance? Right, they're not touching. When we've thought about forces, everything besides gravity has needed to be in contact with one another. And actually, as we analyze this more, we will learn that the contact forces are actually electric forces, which feels strange. So the mat or the material that our bodies are made out of, when we push on something, we're actually applying an electric force. So even then, we are applying what's called force at a distance. So right there is some distance between these two objects, and they're not touching, which makes it feel pretty strange that they can apply a force to one another. This is the same issue that we encountered with gravity, right? So here's the Earth. We got, right, right this is the land. And then we have our moon over here with all its craters and whatnot. And there is a force of gravity that the moon is being pulled back with. Again, we have this action at a distance, right? They're not in contact. How does the Earth apply some sort of force to the moon? In the same way, how do two charges apply forces to each other? Now, the analogy between gravity and electric force are going to be helpful because they're pretty similar, but once Einstein comes along, we realize that gravity isn't necessarily a force. It's this curvature of space-time. You don't need to worry about that in the specific for the moment, but they are going to be helpful analogies for us as we think about what an electric field is. So the first person to describe what this action at a distance was was Michael Faraday. He's probably one of my scientific heroes. I think he's a, he's really sweet. He's actually the reason why we're able to have engines today, but he tackled this problem of how one charge can apply a force to a charge at a distance. And so he defined this as the electric field because physicists wants things wants things to be what's called local, right? So if there is an object here, we want the force to be applied at that spot, not at a distance, right? That would be not local, right? If we were buying our groceries from the middle of the country versus our town, right? That's not local. Here, we want the force to be applied on the charge. So what Michael Faraday did was said, well, when I place a charge down, I get an electric field. And so this electric field is going to propagate in all directions. And as it gets farther away, it's going to get weaker. right? And we get what's called a vector field. So we get a bunch of different vectors coming off of this one point. Since we're dealing with a positive charge, the arrows are going away. If we were dealing with a negative charge, the arrows would be going in, in towards it. So it looks something like this. Notice as the arrows get farther out, they get smaller. So when the charge is initially placed, the electric field is already present. It doesn't need another charge to create the field. The field is already there because one charge is present on its own. And this is helpful for us because in the same way, if I have my earth again, here's, I won't try to be all too accurate with the geography. I don't know. Here's a fun island in the middle. Right? The same thing would happen with the Earth. The Earth is going to be creating its own gravitational field around it. I'm not going to draw all the arrows for this. Right? And we know that as we get farther out from the Earth, the gravitational field or the attraction that other objects experience are going to decrease. So let's focus on the Earth for just a moment. Remember, back in our kinematics unit, we defined that an object, or let's say it's just us, on the surface of the Earth, 
has an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. It doesn't matter how big you are because this acceleration is defined by the Earth, not by you. Right? The Earth is the thing that defines this. We can go back to our equation, right? Force equals G M1 M2 over R squared. Right? And if the Earth is M1, then we get that acceleration of G M1 over R squared M2. Right? Which leads us back to our equation of M2 acceleration of gravity right this is this is what it is oops sorry i put that other one there we don't need this right so something very similar is going to happen with electric force but what's rem remaining isn't going to be acceleration but it is going to be our electric force so let's go back over here when i place down my charge i like i mentioned we create an electric field and that is going to be equal to the force per unit charge. And we're going to use these three lines. This means that it's defined as. It's not an equation that we've solved for or calculated for. Instead, we have decided that this electric field comes into existence, or we found that this electric field comes into existence. And so this is the definition of electric force. So in your notes, you can write this down as the mathematical definition. The word definition, or we write it in the sentence, is force per unit charge. So notice that I've already talked a little bit about those general bullet points, right? This is what replaces action at a distance. Now it is the electric field that is acting on our charge. And since the force is a vector, right, this electric field is a vector field. So if I want to find the force, I can bring in my test charge here. And a test charge is just some charge that I've come up with, I place it at this point and I am now able to find the electric force based on the electric field at this point here. So what I can do is I can find the electric force by essentially adjusting the definition for electric field, right? So force is going to be the charge multiplied by the electric field here. And I should use my vectors here. So this feels like we've kind of come up with it out of nowhere. And it is a difficult concept to, um, to internalize. The, what's actually happening, there are photons that are moving, right? We, we talked about, um, or you might know that light is electromagnetic fields. Um, that's how light propagates through space, uh, is through electromagnetic fields. So actually, what the electric field is, what these arrows all represent, are the photons moving out. And the photons are the things that are going to place a force on our charges. All right. So let's, let's deal with our force equation here. And let's try it out. So let's give our charge a value. So let's say Q is equal to, let's say, five coulombs. This is gigantic. Um, remember that coulombs are really, really small for point charge point charges, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a, just a nice round number so we can use it. And let's say that at this point, we measure the electric force to be 10 newtons. Sweet. So if we know these two things, we can now find our electric field. And we find the electric field to be, right, it's going to be force over charge, 10 over 5. This is going to give us 2 newton coulombs. So right, I mentioned that the electric force is 
uh, or the electric field is force per unit charge. And so no matter what charge I place at this point, so if I change this number over here to be something else, let's say it's 10, let's say it's one, it doesn't matter. The electric field is going to always be the same. And so this is why it's helpful. It's because this charge creates the electric field. And then once I place the charge and then I find the force, but I don't have to worry about the charge at this point here because that is defined by the other charge, right? So let's go back over to our Earth, right? Remember, the acceleration is defined by the Earth's mass, right? So this is how I get this equation over here. Notice it looks very similar to this one, right? So the thing that is being attracted, our Q, and the E is the force per unit charge. What we could talk about over here is that we have our object's mass, and then this would be the force per mass, right? Force over mass gets us G, right? That would be the force per unit mass. So it doesn't matter what mass is on the edge of the Earth, it's always going to receive the same acceleration. For the force, for the charge, right? The electric field isn't defined by my charge Q. Instead, it is defined by this charge over here. It's defined by the amount of charge that is attracting it. 